teachers of reddit what generation did you like teaching most 80s 90s zeros why jesus i have only taught in the tens how long do teachers live for i will be surprised to make it to next year lol if you teach a full length career's worth you might end up teaching the children of former students i had two teachers in high school that taught my parents when they were there well not children of former student, but I find it funny how my nephew she's 7 yo. I 20 have some teacher, that I had too. My girlfriend's mom is a middle school teacher and she mentioned that kids are way more compassionate today, but they drastically lack social skills. That makes sense. I tend to think that happens because the students spend so much time listening to people talking to their phone about their fears and insecurities, but are accustomed to students volunteering that information. I can 100% see lack of social skills today in kids. Kids spend so much time now online and on devices talking to each other digitally that in person they do not know what to say. I think it just takes a little bit of time and effort to get them talking. I know that my chattiest group online got really close at the start of school this year. We all talked about real important issues online and we all got really close. But it was easier to force them to take turns when I could mute them and let them know they will talk next. When they came back in person it took a lot of terrible jokes on my part to get them comfortable enough to really talk again. But now the louder students are overpowering the quiet students, so I have to find a way to make everyone take turns when in person. My mom has been teaching for about 25 years. She says students have not changed. Parents have. How old are her kids? Early elementary. OP has very good reddit skills for being an elementary school. I cannot offer what my favorite science teacher told us in regards to why he chose to keep teaching for so long. He was in his 70s and had been teaching since he was in his 20s. I will quote him as best as I can remember the kids change. The clothes change. The attitudes change. The science changes. I live through times when women could not learn science like men and when people refuse to teach people because of the color of their skin. The one thing that does not change is the hunger for knowledge. I get new children every year who I truly enjoy teaching. Some kids do not want to learn, but there are always the special few that find wonder in science. I continue teaching for those kids, the ones who find the wonder and joy behind science. There are more and more of you each year and it truly fills me with joy. So I'm guessing his favorites were the kids in his last teaching year 2008 when he died. In the case of our food tech teacher she hated all children equally. My science teacher told me, when I went to university, I did not attend the classes. I did not do any of the homework. I just showed up and passed the tests. When I was not at work or taking a test, I was at the bar having fun. Eventually I had to get my shit together because they made it where you could not pass the classes if you had poor attendance and low homework grades. You remind me of my younger self. I think you must have had the other science teacher. Was he right? Yep. I finished high school with around 120 tardies and 50, 60 absences. I would do no homework and pass most classes with an average to high B. I did get to skip a few math classes when I went to university. But if I had a redo, I would BS the work and get a higher GPA for more scholarship money. Also, I do like the bars. But I do not go out much because I do not have any loans. And I would like to go on some big trips or spend a year doing research before I enter the workforce. So I save most of my money. Edit I did have to get my shit together after getting past all the gen ed courses. I'm still a new teacher. But what I have really enjoyed so far is using slang around students. Saying yeet gets a completely different reaction from 10th graders eye rolls and 5th graders glee and I love either one. I teach middle school and one of my favorite things is making references to be cringy. Even better is using references wrong. Example great point. Jessica. That was a very yeet observation. This is the way. Does this apply to the misuse of dabs too? For example for the last time Carson. Put your phone away right. Now swift action double dab. University prof here. When I started teaching in the early zeros. Students still got even my most obscure Simpsons and 80s film references. By the late zeros. I had nothing left to reference. 
By the early 2010s my kid had reached adolescence. So I had new material. But it really was not mine. And the culture had splintered so much that my Rick and Morty references only hit about 30% of the class. Lately I just stopped trying. And became that old. Out of touch profile lived long enough to become the villain. I used to be with it. Then they changed what it was. Now what I'm with is not it, and what is it seems weird and scary to me. Not a teacher, and not on point, but interesting to me. My wife teaches graphic design which has become nearly completely a digital pursuit over the past 25 years. She has remarked that 10 years ago her students would instantly catch on and often be teaching her things about how the fairly specialized data hog software she uses in class works keyboard shortcuts architecture understanding. In the past couple of years she increasingly sees students who have near zero computer experience and are afraid of having to learn new software. She has come to realize there are many students whose computer experience is using their phone for social media. I'm actually not surprised by this. Just because people have been using touch screens their entire life does not mean they understand how they work. The basics are beyond their understanding. To them it is just some magic thing that's always existed. Someone older who had the chance to watch home computers evolve has a better sense of what they are. Millennial young Gen X are probably the most tech savvy. Went from dial up to Tesla's. Problem now is everything is an app. They know what apps do what, but beyond that are helpless. Goes well beyond just the phones to all in one ecosystems like Mac. In a lot of ways it's like boomers and cars. They started when everything was carburetted and bare bones. Never thought about it this way. Boomers are great with cars, because in their generation cars were simple enough to be diagnosed and fixed with basic tools and understanding. Newer cars are more complicated, more polished, and have a steeper learning curve that is intimidating. Tech is the same. When I was a kid I had to figure out why Windows XP was ducked up, and how to fix it. Now iOS is at such a mature state, that you can use the thing constantly for years, and never have to understand how it works, because it rarely breaks. I taught in the late 70s. Early 80s in northern Alberta. The nice part about being that early in my career, plus in northern Alberta, was that you could pretty much do whatever you wanted. My kids found an injured duck on the playground, and we brought it into the classroom and spent weeks nursing that duck back to health. As the duck grew stronger, he would do these practice flights in our classroom to the point where he would do a couple of laps around the room and my kids were old and he even get excited about it. Later in that same year we grew hydroponic tomato plants that went from floor to ceiling and were able to harvest tomatoes in the middle of winter. Man. That was a great year. Pretty sure you cold and tea do most of that in a grade 1 classroom these days. When I was in year 6 a few years ago a tawny frogmoth baby fell out of a tree and was found by a group of 1st 2nd graders. Instead of helping the bird the school just taped off the area and let it die. It is like anything that might become a distraction in the classroom is just removed instead of being used as a learning opportunity or something fun. Devices and helicopter parenting. Which does not mean parents who are intensely concerned about their children's futures, but parents who never leave their damn kids alone. I'm a millennial, and have only taught zoomers but yes, so many helicopter parents. They text their kids in the middle of class, call them, everything. It drives me nuts. I remember getting my first cell phone in high school and my parents told me it was just for emergencies. One time I got a call in the middle of class, and it was my dad. I got up and went out into the hall to answer despite the teacher's threats to punish me. I answer in a panic to find out my dad isn't he happy. I've been staying up late and wants to talk that night. I was furious. All the parental menace he had mustered completely fell apart as I tore into him for calling me on a cell phone that had been designated as for emergencies only in the middle of class. Ended up going back inside and apologizing to the teacher. Other than that though. My parents would give me my space and only investigate when my grade slipped which they did sometimes. I remember running out of class in college to take a call and the professor making fun of me, saying my generation are all addicted to technology and cannot ignore a single call. So I took the call, came back in and said, thanks for the call out, I have to go. My grandmother died in the hospital, I was so goddamn mad at him for being such a jackass. I'm not a teacher. 
but both my mother and sister are. They stated two big differences. One social media changed how kids behave a lot. Way more bullying is done online now and less of it is physically violent. Two certain trends do not really exist anymore. The punk emo stuff from the 2000s is not present today, but there is a stronger group of gamer internet kids that play Fortnite and use TikTok. Also, there are way more outspokenly gay students. Kids should be seen and not heard. You can always tell a Milford man. Speaking of generational change, it is a shame that this reference would have gotten 5 times the upvotes 5 years ago. In my mind kids have always been good at heart. But society and their upbringing is what ultimately shapes or corrupts them. Unfortunately, I think more kids nowadays have mental health issues since they unconsciously compare themselves to their peers. The difference is 20 plus years ago kids only compared themselves to the few hundred kids in their school. Nowadays, they are comparing themselves to the millions of kids they see online. Do you think that the perceived uptick of mental health issues could be attributed to the focus that we now put on mental health? I feel like issues in the past would have gone unnoticed just due to the lack of awareness. I am sure everything has played a part. It is not anyone's fault. In all honesty, most kids are the same regardless of the generation they were born in. If you strip down everything the same percentage of kids choose to apply themselves or at least attempt to learn something while in the classroom. What has changed? The parents and their attitudes. A lot more of them have opinions on how their child should learn. And unfortunately, it is not always a good opinion. Teaching in university has been interested. On one hand, I enjoyed the 90s because there was still not a ton of technology. Sure there was more manual work, but I enjoyed it. As for students, one of the things I have noticed is that my cultural references have absolutely tanked. I was teaching a philosophy ethics 100 course and literally no one got my reference to the matrix or pulp fiction or well, anything. It was the first time I felt that internal twinge of being out of date and realizing I was teaching 17, 18 year olds who were being born when that movie came out. I still love the job though. I'm at the later end of Gen Z and something I have noticed is that oftentimes professors will make references that we generally get but that are not funny so they get very little reaction. I think a big part of it is just differences in generational humor. Honestly it is not so much the generation but the age group and the relative interest and if you connect with the students or not and they connect with you as a teacher and respect you as an educator who has their best interests at heart. I like the younger students for their curiosity and eagerness and excitement when new ideas are being introduced or there is some challenge learning related contest going on in the class. This gets more difficult to cultivate as a group energy level in the puberty years and easier afterwards. But I have had some kids in the 12, 14 age group come in during lunch to continue their activity just because they were so engaged in what we were doing and I was cool with it as I ate my lunch in the classroom and therefore my classroom I taught computers. So other labs were often locked after classes was always open. It is very obvious when you see the interest and level of engagement from a class that is ready to learn. It is almost like when an engine is revving up and all cylinders are firing in sequence you can really feel the energy. But you notice the differences as some classes just click with their teacher more than others. Even in the same year. For those who may be wondering why that is. I like to think of each class as a sort of team. As in sports. I suspect that if there is a certain threshold of active. Curious and interested students in each class then that interest level and energy just is infectious and becomes the overall mood of the class. A few leaders in the class can raise the energy of the whole team. Of course. It is the same story if there are enough disinterested students in a class who honestly do not want to be there and have no interest in learning. Sprinkle in a few more who prefer to disrupt a class for laughs and that just drains the interest and excitement right out of the room. Unless the teacher or occasionally some students can reassert the need for respect so learning can continue uninterrupted. It can really be apparent when you are teaching the same exact lesson to different classes on the same day as you will see which ones are into it and which ones just are not. Your point about a threshold for interested disinterested individuals rang true in my high school experience. Class before mine seen as a bunch of troublemakers. Unfocused. Lazy. That kind of thing. There were a few kids at the top 
seen as tryhards, but the positive attitude toward school diminished very quickly from the top 4 or 5 rankings. My class we were competitive in everything. The cool kids were athletes that expected as and bees in class. Competed in academic events in between sporting events. Very few people who did not care even set the annual fundraising record our senior year. The last person in our top quarter ranking would have made it into the top 10% of the class before mine. It was a pretty big contrast between our two class years. There were enough sociable, academically competitive people in my class that everyone kind of felt like they needed to work hard to stand out. But there were only a few in the class above us that showed interest in school. And it just was not enough to make the rest of the kids feel like they needed to try. I also think labels play a role in this. That class had the lazy label for a long time. I think it set the bar low for a lot of kids. They are all doing fine now. So it was not really a big deal in the end. But, there were definitely differences. 97 minus sarcastic. Grungy. Smoking more cigarettes. More cliquey and edgy. 07 minus petty. Attention starved. Overwhelmed. But much nicer. 17 minus under. So many layers of irony and memes they don't even know who they are anymore or care. There is no point in being creative or devolving a personality. Anything you could think of has already been done. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe for more videos.